And you've just heard Sunflowers by Frankie Morrow, the first track on the Blue Parrot Backpackers Hostel EP. And I'm so pleased to be joined by Maz from Frankie Morrow now. Hello, Maz. Hello. So, first of all, from the outside, 2022 seemed to be an amazing year for you. How was it for you? Yeah, I mean, it, it, it was genuinely, it was such a long time coming. These songs had such a gigantic incubation period. Right. <laughs> um, because they kind of, it all sort of started, I started writing the bulk of them sort of 2018, 2019. Oh, wow pandemic obviously happened so I kind of got to start recording them in that time but obviously wasn't gigging or anything so it's just been so nice to actually take them out into the real world now you know and how uh, that's interesting that they've been <clears throat> about for a while I was going to ask you how mm. you wrote and recorded the songs was there work done over the pandemic or were you kind of did you park them and then come back to them no it was actually well it's not, not good in a way, but in the sense that I could still record like remotely. So I was recording a lot of the, actually the bulk of the guitars, vocal, bass, that was all done my house, my friend Neve's house, and uh, Sam in the band, his house as well. Um, and then the drums were the only thing that we actually had to go into the studio for. Um, okay. So it was very much cobbled together. <laughs> in isolation basically that's really interesting because <laughs> yeah. i was talking about them uh with fiona little from geffergeist and the sound i'm stunned that they were done that way because it sounds like yeah. you're in the studio you know <laughs> all together and really recording your parts in your kind of, almost in an old-fashioned way but it wasn't like that at all no i mean i demoed a lot like i i really knew what the sound was going to be right. for the final tracks like they went through so many iterations i think before we got to that point um and then i think because we added on the strings at the very end and that just added so much so nick peeney who did the double bass is like gigs a lot with like lord of marlin and is just like an amazing yeah. musician I know him from doing gigs uh, with his partner, Izzy. And so he was able to kind of record them remotely for us. And then Annabelle as well is actually based, she did the violin parts on the record and she's based in Wales actually. So again, she just did all the parts remotely. And then we would just like have Zooms or phone chats about, you know, can we change this bit? Like, what, you know, that kind of thing. Um. So, yeah. It's amazing how lockdown seems to have shown people that there are other ways to kind of collaborate and make music together yeah yeah definitely I, I actually really enjoyed being so involved in the process as well because I think like obviously I do want us to get in the studio as well yeah. but I feel like for that first one to really like understand all the mechanics and like I was a producer on it as well which I feel like gave me such a good sort of full overview of like the birth of the song to actually have it in your hands you know so I actually really enjoyed it I'm quite a geek at heart as well so I like love <laughs> I like honestly I was spending hours comping vocals I'm, I take like a million takes I'm just like looking on YouTube tutorials trying to figure out what I'm doing <laughs> so the band is Frankie Morrow where does the name yeah. come from so the name, well, so I always, I always wanted to be in a band, but I kind of, I'd, I'd mainly gigged solo really, um, and then I was like, okay, right, we got, we got to get a name onto this, and I didn't really want to have it, I never really wanted it under my own name, I don't know why, um, and so it's actually from my grandparents, so my mum's dad is Francis. Morrow, or was Francis Morrow. He married a Francis who also became Francis Morrow and they had a child called Francis. Wow. They like <laughs> and that I way. was like, this is a sitting duck. I'm gonna do this. <laughs> and I loved like, I don't know, there was I feel like there's something quite Scottish about it. And I liked I I liked Frankie over Francis because I liked the androgyny of it. I kind of yeah. didn't want it. it. It felt, I don't know, it felt quite me, to be fair. And I liked that it had a kind of nod back home to my mum and stuff so uh that's and how did the band get together how did you all get well 
so me and James were in a band when we were like 14 or 15 or something like that we used to gig about Glasgow and all our friends would come and get drunk under it <laughs> that was basically <laughs> why they came to the gigs I think yeah. <laughs> so I knew him from way back when and then Duncan who's the drummer um, again we've been friends for years so he's in the vegan leather if you okay. know these guys as well yes. yeah and I went to school with Maddie and Jan from the Vegan Leather. So we are kind of like in the same circles and that kind of thing. And I met Duncan randomly on a train home from London to Glasgow for Christmas. And we got chatting and I was like, I re- this was like the Christmas before the pandemic. So this was 2019. Mm-hmm. I was like, oh, next year, I'd love for us to get it. <laughs> He's like, yeah, let's do it. Let's do it. And then obviously, you know, another two years kind of went by before we... We got together again. And then Neve I met in London, but she's from Glasgow. Well, we're all Scottish. And then Sam I met at a gig that I, w- I went to go and see Neve at a gig in Camden. And Sam was there. We got chatting and, yeah, and hit it off. So, yeah, that's kind of how we all came together. And everybody kind of has, like, their own projects going on at the same time as well. So it was interesting you said uh, 2019, next year's going to be our year. <laughs> Literally. <laughs> it's a running joke that in the van that James Duncan like to recite that they get their yearly message from Maz that says we're gonna start a van because I think I've done it like twice before we actually go to do it. <laughs> yeah, here she goes again. But <laughs> but but 2022 kind of was your year. It, you know, you yeah, you, you did have it. <laughs> what were your highlights? What kind of, kind of stood out over the last 12 months? Oh man, yeah, there honestly has been so many. I think I wasn't really expecting anything to be honest. Like, I was genuinely just happy that the songs were recorded and were getting put out. But to have had the support from yourselves from introducing, um, through that, we got the Radio One play, you know, and headlining our own shows at the Hug and Pine and the Flying Dark, and then down in London at Seabright and stuff. It's just like places that I've always gone and seen bands that I love that we're now like doing that which has been really really cool and I think also just we have so much fun when we play and that's what people always say when they see us live they're like you just look like you're absolutely loving it because we do and like we're such a you know an old bunch of friends as well which is kind of like I wouldn't have it any other way yeah (laughs) I mean, even the songs on the EP, it, they sound like people who love playing music together, you know? Not just love playing music, but love playing music together, you know? It, it's like a, um, you're, you're all in it together, that kind of thing. Yeah, definitely. And I think because we've all got lots of experience in different ways, and I've been playing with me for like four years now, maybe. So I do electric guitar and BVs for her. She does BVs and me and me and Eve, we're on Sam's last record doing BVs. So it's kind of like we're all, you know, helping each other out, really. So are you all kind of based in London? Yeah, yeah. I mean, kind of uh, kind of back and forth, to be honest, because there's yeah. so much happening up here as well. I'm in Glasgow at the moment, actually. Um, but yeah, yeah, we all kind of met down there. So is there a little kind of music, Scottish music scene kind of? Yeah. <laughs> There actually is. There, there is a lot, to be honest. I mean, we've met so many Scottish musicians just from sort of gigging around. We all seem to find each other somehow. No, <laughs> so it's like send, send it. <laughs> yeah, yeah, absolutely. Doing missionary work out there. <laughs> yeah, exactly. And what are, what are your plans for uh, this year, for 2023? Yeah, well, we are getting in the studio for the first time all together so excited we're going to be working with Taylor who mixed the last record but obviously didn't record it because it's very much cobbled together but we're actually going in with her um very very soon and that will be hopefully for well yeah it's not quite taking shape yet what it will be but definitely there will be new releases this year um and yeah hopefully get on festivals that's probably quite a big one just yeah just getting out on the road really maybe doing a little tour 
and just yeah. hopefully, yeah, continuing on where we left off. Paying more live gigs is that's that's exciting. Yeah. Um, the I wanted to ask you about the EP title, Blue Parrot Backpackers Hostel. Where does that come from? Yeah. Um, so there were so many like different titles in the running for it, but that one I felt just well, it was kind of weird, which I liked because <laughs> it's like, what does that mean? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> and I like stuff like that. So that was point one. And then yeah, it was so it's it's like a breakup record, you know, it's kind of all about that relationship and stuff. And that was where I'd I had met my ex out when I was living in Sydney in Australia. Right. And it was Basically, this kind of moment where I remember being in that hostel and I'm actually quite introverted naturally. But, I, you know, when you're traveling and stuff, you're like, right, I need to put myself out there and talk to people. And I remember thinking like, oh, no, I can't, can't be bothered. Actually, I'd love to go and sit with a book. But I did it anyway. We met and blah, blah, blah. But I quite liked it because it, it just felt to me like a good, you know, it posed that question of what if I hadn't? forced myself out to have that conversation that those few years would never have happened you know would have stayed in the street all these kind of things and I just thought it summed up the kind of I don't know the possibilities of life I suppose quite well yeah it's quite a well-known uh, backpackers isn't it I think yeah I think it is to be fair it's quite funny actually because when you google the EP it comes up yeah. But I don't know. I don't know if it's actually still going or not. Because someone commented like, "Oh, I stayed in that hostel. I've been listening to your EP, blah blah." I think it's shut down now. I was like, "No, <laughs> not yeah, the blue parrot." <laughs> I, I was in Sydney for a short time, a long, long time ago. But I'm sure it was going yeah. back then. You know, it was really. Like, so that's interesting. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I, that's I, the thing you've got to think about, I suppose, when you name anything your band your ep an album is that is someone going to google it and is there going to be a huge amount of other yeah. searches it's true it's true i've been quite lucky actually with frankie morrow to be fair that seems to be yeah <laughs> the one and only frankie morrow <laughs> that and your, your grandparents i know <laughs> thanks grandpa <laughs> And over the last year, is there any other bands or musicians or music that you've really enjoyed? Is there something you could recommend to oh, listeners? Yeah, I've been listening to so much new music this year, actually. I've been writing loads. Um, who have I seen recently? Uh, well, me, Duncan and James went to see Lizzie Reed, actually, mm -hmm. last month, I think it was. I had a couple of weeks ago. Absolutely amazing. Adore her stuff. Um, new dad has seen support Paolo Nutini recently who were a new discovery for me I kind of I love lots of old folk as well to be yeah. fair lots of old folk writers kind of mixed with like alternative and, and indie I mean we did like an article recently where each of us sort of picked a track and Duncan's really been getting into Black Midi, so we're all having a band out and to see Black Midi in March, which I'm looking forward to. Um, yeah, Katie J. Pearson as well, loved her new record. Cloth, been really oh, getting into Cloth, them. Yeah, absolutely. There's so much like good music coming out of the, the Scottish scene at the moment, you know. Um. Yeah, it's really, it's, yeah, I've been writing so much. I think because, you know, that way you have that kind of period where you're just consuming lots of stuff and then you sort of, <laughs> there's there's a lot of stuff to release, but yeah. So as well as um, playing live in uh, the new year, are you going to be, are you looking to release something new as well? Definitely, yes. It's all sort of, um in the pipes, in pipes, in the pipes, what is that reason? In the pipeline. <laughs> in the in pipeline. The I was going to say in the pipe works. I was like, oh, I'm not a plumber, what's going on? <laughs> uh, <laughs> yes, definitely. So I think early, well, very, very soon, actually, um, we'll be recording a few tunes. And I think we'll be releasing again early summer, I would say. Excellent. Early summer. Um, because the first EP was very much like finding the sound. It was quite, it was a lot softer, I'd say. The new right. stuff is quite, 
if you see us live, I'm on my electric. I barely, I don't really play my acoustic that much in a live show. It's actually quite heavy, like a, quite a bit heavier, I'd say. So, yes, it's been really, really cool to like demo all that and find, yeah, find out who we are as as a band kind of thing, you know. Well, I'm really looking forward to hearing that when it comes. Maz, thanks so much for taking the time to talk to me. I really appreciate it. I've had so much fun. Thank you for having me. And it's so nice to to meet you virtually. Finally. Absolutely, yeah. I'm looking for, <laughs> unfortunately, I couldn't make the Hug and Pint gig, but I'm really looking forward to seeing you live as well. Yeah, that'd be great. And this is Frankie Morrow and Sirens.